Hello, all you wonderful people, and welcome to yet another video where we explore new ways on how to make the learning of math fun. Now, in the earlier video, we spoke about the calculator page. It was a basic video tutorial, part one of the calculator page on the TI Inspire CX2. So, if you haven't seen part one of the calculator page video that I made, please go and take a look at it. The link to this video will be somewhere up there and then you can come back and watch this video. But on this video, we're going to take a look at the algebra menu on how to solve a system of linear equations and how to use the polynomial tools. Ready? Let's roll. Let's go and insert a new problem. This is going to be problem number, this is problem number four, page number one, a calculator page, because this video is all about a calculator page. But this time, under the algebra menu, we're going to take a look at the polynomial tools. Should we do this or should we do the system of linear equations first? Let's do the system of linear equations first, okay? So when we go to the system of linear equations, uh, you can enter two or three. If you're an IB student, we'll take a look at the system of three equations because you'll be doing equations of planes. But the thing that I also want to highlight is that you can even change the variables to A comma B. You know, why just stick to the traditional X, Y? And when you say that and hit OK, you will see the template for a system of linear equations in A and B. Can you see that? So let me just make up some equations and let's just hope that there is a solution because every time I make up these equations, it, sometimes there is no solution. So keep your fingers crossed. So 2a plus 3b uh, is equal to 7. I just made that up. And uh, for the fun of it, let me just make it b minus, let's give it a fractional uh, coefficient for a. So I'm going to make this 2 over 3. Uh, times, let me bring that outside, that fraction sign, times a is equal to negative 11. I made this up, so fingers crossed, hit enter, wow. a equals 10, b equals negative 13 over 3. So this is how you would use the calculator to solve a system of linear equations. Again, let me tell you, you must do your working on your paper and this is a good way to only check and see whether you've got the right answer before you submit your paper, you know, assignment or test paper, or whatever that is. Now, for those of you who are IB students, here is the question from the IB question paper where it says the following system of equations represents three planes in space. Uh, the equations are given as these, uh, x plus 3y plus z equals negative 1, x plus 2y minus 2z equals 15, 2x plus y minus z equals 6, and we need to find the coordinates of the point of intersection of the three planes, and that is the solution, right? For any system, that's the point of intersection, the common point, or a common line. You'll study about that. But let's see how we can use this feature to solve a system of three linear equations. So I'm going to switch back to my calculator, and we'll go to menu algebra and solve system of linear equations. This time, you're going to say three. Now watch what's going to happen. The moment I say three, and I just hit tab, I've not even entered z. I just hit tab and the calculator immediately recognizes that you must have three, equation, three variables for those three equations. So I hit OK and it gives me the template for the system of three linear equations. I'm just going to enter it the way it is given. x plus 3y plus z uh, is equal to a negative 1. I would encourage you to use this key, the key to the left of enter or under the number 3, the key for 3 that is. That's for negative and this other one is for subtraction. Okay, so that's negative one. Uh, that's because sometimes the calculator is kind of moody, you know, uh, so just get into the habit of using the right key for the right uh, purpose. 2z uh, is equal to 15. And uh, then you have 2x plus y minus z is equal to a six. And now when I hit enter, it will give me the values for x, y, and z. x is equal to negative 1, y equals 2, and z equals negative 6. And those are the coordinates of the point of intersection of those three planes. Simple? All right. Let's go to the next item in our algebra menu, which is, uh, wait a minute, I just want to show something else, which is on the CAS, okay? So if I switch to the CAS calculator, uh, let me just uh, insert a calculator page, that's this calculator page, uh, problem one. And if I go to menu under algebra, and because it's a CAS calculator, you will see a lot more uh, options, but under solve system of equations, you've got this another beautiful thing, solve system of equations along with solve system of linear equations. Uh, the non-CAS version only has a linear equations, but this one has got solve system of equations, which means that your two equations could be 
uh, one linear and one quadratic. So let me make up uh, another equation for you. So if I just make this as 2x uh, square, I'm nervous about my own entries. And you know why? Because when I make up, sometimes it, just give me, it doesn't give me the solution. Uh, what should I say? Uh, let me just say minus 3x. And let's just say minus 2 uh, equals 0. That's a quadratic. I've made it up. But keep your fingers crossed. You know what I mean by that. And let's just uh, add a linear equation. 3x minus 7y is equal to 11. And fingers crossed. And when we hit enter, it will give me the solution. You know, more than <laughs> the calculator giving me the solution. I'm just happy that whatever I made up actually had a solution. But you can see what I mean. That's a quadratic. And uh, that's a linear. And they both intersect in two different points. And those are the coordinates of the point of intersection. X is equal to negative half and Y equals negative 25 over 14. The coordinates of the first point of intersection, X equals 2 and Y equals negative 5 over 7. The coordinates of the second point of intersection. This feature is only on the CAS. If you are going to take your SAT exam or if you're taking the AP exam, the CAS is allowed. So I thought it might just be worth it to show you that this feature is possible on that same algebra menu. So now let's switch back to our non-CAS version uh, and we'll go and take a look at uh, the polynomial tools. Find roots of a polynomial, find real roots and complex roots and let's take a look at that. And here, uh, this is one way to also find the roots of a quadratic equation. So uh, you can enter two and you can say real. And when I say, okay, uh, I have to enter the coefficients and again, I'm going to be a little careful. So I'm just say two uh, for the coefficient of x square. Let me just say negative three. And whenever I say negative, remember this key. Okay, let's get into that habit for all reasons. Uh, negative three is the coefficient of uh, x and uh, negative two, negative two. Yeah, let me make this negative two. All right. And if I say, okay, uh, that gives me the syntax, okay, poly roots, that's the quadratic um, expression, comma x, as I said before, in all tier calculators, comma x after any equation or expression says that's the variable you're solving for. And now when I hit enter, it will give me the roots of that polynomial, negative one by two, comma two, meaning those are the roots of that quadratic polynomial. You could have also used the same option, algebra, uh, polynomial tools to find the roots of a cubic polynomial. Okay, so when you say cubic polynomial, and let me just make up another set of numbers. Uh, let me make, make it five. And what should I make this? Let me make this negative 10. Uh, this can be, let's say one. And the constant term can be uh, negative two maybe. Making up, keeping it there. And there again, you can see comma x. That means it's saying that's the variable we are solving for. When I hit enter, it just gives me one value. Now, for those of you who are familiar with the fundamental theorem of algebra, you might be wondering, hmm, what's going on? So let's do something. We will go and copy this expression and copying and pasting, you know, control C, command C, depending upon whether you're a Mac user or a PC user. But this copy and paste feature, that's only possible on a TI Inspire. So I'm going to just go and copy that expression and bring it down here. But what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to uh, write the letter C in front of it. C poly roots. You're talking about the complex roots. Again, comma C referring to the variable being X. Did I say comma C or comma X? Okay, comma X. There you go. You've got the real root 2 as before. And you've got the other two complex roots, the, the complex conjugates. So this is a really cool feature to have, but let me remind you again and again, and I'm not going to get tired reminding you again and again and again and again, that you need to show your working, whether it's the exam or whether it's just a class work, you know, do your work. And this is a good feature to just check and see whether what you've been doing is right or wrong. Now for the final feature of this video, let's get back to that end solve that we were discussing on the previous video. Now, for those of you who haven't seen part A of this video, it might be a good idea that you pause this video right now and just go and take a look at that video because this feature will only make sense if you've seen that part also. We are looking at end solve. So I'm going to menu and algebra and I'll pull out end solve. I'm going to insert that same quadratic I had put in problem number four. So I'm going to copy that expression. Again, as I said, this copy and paste is a feature that you will find only on the TI Inspire. Okay, so I'm just going to copy. As you saw, I'm copying from something from page, uh, from problem four and bringing it to problem three. 
uh, and I need to say equal to zero, okay, for an NSOL uh, syntax, there needs to be an equal to sign and then comma X must also be there because that's the variable we are solving for. Now, when I hit enter, notice I got only one solution. If I were to rework this NSOL feature and this time I layer condition. The conditions are in that flyout menu, control equal to, I'll get all the conditions less than, greater than, so on and so forth. Can you see this last uh, one, which is a vertical line? I use that and say, that's the condition and we say X greater than, let's just copy a previous solution today. I'm just showing all this copy paste options. Okay. So I just copy that. And I basically what I'm telling the calculator is that solve this equation now, when x is greater than negative 0 0.5, and now when I hit enter, it will give me the other root. Okay, let's just go, go and compare. This was problem four, where I got both the roots. Can you see that? Negative half and two in one shot. Whereas now, using nsolve, you're getting one root at a time. Now, that's kind of, you might be wondering, well, that's a limitation. Well, I did say that in the previous video that the nsolve does have a few limitations, and this might be one of it that it will only give you one solution at a time and you need to have an intuitive idea as to is it going to have another solution or not. So that could be considered as a limitation, but still you can use this install feature in creative ways. Let me demonstrate. Suppose that you wanted to find or you wanted to list the sequences whose general term is something like 3n plus 5, okay? 3n plus 5 is the general term of a sequence, and I've used n this time as a variable, all right? That's good. SEQ is a function that will help us list the terms of a sequence. Uh, in this case, it's 3n plus 5, and I would say comma n, because that's the variable this time in n. Uh, I want the first, let's say, 10 terms of the sequence, um, that is defined by 3n plus 5, okay? And I hit enter and it will list the first 10 terms of the sequence whose general term is 3n plus 5. And this was a good thing to see that comma n, n being the variable. Now, if I want to find the sum of those first 10 terms of that same sequence, I can just uh, type in sum for sum and I'll use the top arrow key to bring down that expression. So that expression should be interpreted as I want the sum of the first n terms of the sequence whose nth term is given by 3n plus 5. Hit enter, and that will give me the sum of the first 10 terms of the sequence whose general term is 3n plus 5. Now, how do I use the nsol feature creatively? Watch. I go on menu, algebra, nsol, and suppose I want to find the value of n for a given sum of the sequence. So I'm just going to pull that term or that expression what I had. I'm just going to copy and paste it down here. I'm just going to make a few adjustments here. So Internally, it is sum of the sequence n in n, that's the variable, from 1 to, I'm going to make it n, from 1 to n, because I want to solve for n, so I'm just going to say comma n, all right? So the way it should be interpreted is n solve, that means solve this sum being equal to, all right, from 1 to n. So let's just give it a number, so we are going to make it 3000, something like that. So we are basically saying, Solve this equation that the sum of the sequence going from 1 to n is equal to 3000 and find that value of n. That's how that question has to be interpreted. Okay. Uh, and when I hit enter, it will give me the value of n. So that would mean that the sum of the first 43 terms of the sequence would be 3000 or more. So while there are limitations that the nsolve feature will only give you one solution at a time, it also provides room for creativity. Yesterday during a webinar, Hassan Atisham from Numerical Analytics showed us a creative, fun and cool way in which he extended this nsol feature to find inverses of functions which could have otherwise not been possible. So maybe one day I'm going to invite Hassan Atisham to come and share with us all how he has extended the use of the nsol in creative ways. If you have been getting value from these videos of mine, please do consider subscribing to this channel. I will see you in the next video.